Hey guys, it's ADW and welcome to part 2 of my explanation on my 8 cores on one circuit idea. And today, I'm going to explain how that works. So last time we established the problem with these anti-burnout adders. They're so slow that if we don't send data into them every two ticks, a standard synchronized adder is more practical. So we need some system that sends data into the adder on two tick intervals. These computations cannot require the outputs of computations that the adder is doing at at the same time, so they have to be somewhat unrelated. But each one of these instructions also has to be meaningful. There's many ways that you could come up with such a system. One of them might be to have multiple sets of registers and have them share an ALU. The first set of registers would send the first computation into the ALU, and the second would send the second in, etc, etc, etc. This would mean that you would treat each set of registers like an additional core. But because you're doing so many computations in a clock cycle, you would need lots and lots of cores to do this. This isn't bad in and of itself, but having more cores in this way takes up more and more space. And more and more space taken up means more delay, which means more cores, which takes up more space, etc, etc, etc. Now it is true that at this point you have outclassed torch-based adders by doing so many computations, but we can do better. Because it turns out there's a memory design that is extremely small and can be read from and written to on two tick intervals. And here it is, delay line memory. Each one of these units has eight memory addresses in it. So every two ticks, a new memory address arrives at the output. The problem with using this memory design is that you can only read and write to it on two tick intervals. After two ticks, you're accessing a new memory address. So you have to wait for the registers to go around the delay line to do anything with it. But because you can send the next piece of data into the ALU as soon as the next address arrives at the read, every single memory address is sent into the ALU in one clock cycle. Because of this, we can replace the many sets of registers with one set of extremely compact delay line registers. And that is my solution to the problems with anti-burnout logic. Just use delay lines like this. The simplest way to implement this is to make each core in the computer an architecture where each processing unit only has one register. Since you will be writing to that one register, you can implement this by setting the output of the adder, which is over there, into the inputs and adding some delay, which you can see right here in front of you. It's a really simple thing to do, but it does allow us to get an 8-core processing unit into a very small space. The amount of delay that you put on it determines how many cores you will have, as well as the clock speed, by the way. To calculate the, the delay for any such design, multiply the interval at which new information comes into the red, from the registers, which is the throughput, by the number of cores, and then subtract the delay of the adder. So for this 8-core design, it would be 2, which is the throughput, because it's anti-burnout, times 8, minus 7 for the delay of the adder, or 9 ticks of delay. So because you have to add delay to the thing as a whole just to add the extra cores, it really doesn't matter that this design is really slow now. The only thing that matters is throughput, which makes it so that this adder design is the most practical design. This design isn't perfect. For example, it's very difficult to do conditional branching. And the simple delay line design requires accumulators, which isn't the most useful type of register. But I have decided that issues like this aren't major in a graphics card, as in a computer that does lots of simple calculations to render images onto a screen. And I am almost done developing an 8-bit architecture that implements this into a graphical processor. It's going to involve some pretty cool stuff like advanced RISC and microcode, which I haven't been over yet. We're also going to be going over graphical processing in general, which is pretty cool. So look forward to that coming up soon, but for now, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.